Good morning. Thank you for joining us here this morning. I am Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego. I'm here with Councilwoman Deborah Stark, who chairs the subcommittee that has primary jurisdiction over housing and homelessness. As the nation's fifth largest city, we have seen abundant opportunity come from our historic growth, but it has also brought challenges. Two of these challenges, a lack of affordable housing and a growing issue with people experiencing homelessness, are deeply intertwined. Since I took office almost a year ago, I've been calling on surrounding cities, the county, and the state to help us examine these issues and create innovative solutions. For far too long, we've addressed these issues with short-term solutions without looking far enough into the future to calculate challenges that may arise down the line. That approach stops now. Last year, Phoenix spent nearly $20 million on homelessness services and provided twice as many dollars as the state did to fund the downtown homeless service campus Central Arizona Shelter Services, even though it serves the region at large. We cannot continue to shoulder this burden, burden largely alone. I'm to come in here. Governor Ducey has agreed to convene all Maricopa County mayors to address homelessness with a regional approach, the first time a regional collaboration like this has happened in the past decade. I would like to recognize Mayor John Giles of Mesa, who helped push this idea of regional collaboration. We need to come together as elected officials across boundaries, we need the governor to work with us as mayors so that we can address what is a challenge for all of Maricopa County. But this is only step one. I've asked our city manager to deliver to the Phoenix City Council no later than June 1 an expanded and enlarged plan to address homelessness in our city. On Wednesday, the council will formally vote to proceed with the formation of this plan. My fellow council members in the community will be deeply involved in the creation of the entire plan. Many council members have important expertise in this issue that will help us better address the challenge. Fighting homelessness is a priority for every member of the Phoenix City Council. Over the next 90 days, multiple city departments, council members, and the community will be part of this effort. At every step of the way, community voices will be heard and incorporated. City staff will be going to the community throughout the process for input and feedback. In this year's budget, I will be requesting an additional $3 million to address homelessness that is on top of the $20 million we are already spending. The county and the state should partner with the city to help provide financial resources and shelter or land. This needs to be a partnership. We have seen success in neighboring cities such as Tempe and Mesa, but we remain the de facto service provider for many surrounding communities. We know the causes for homelessness are varied, but some issues loom larger than others. For example, the first week of February, the city, along with many other service providers, did an extensive outreach to individuals in the area surrounding the campus. This was above and beyond the weekly cleanups that the city already does. During this three-day outreach effort, providers made contact with almost 180 individuals. Of those individuals contacted, only 32% were willing to accept services. 42% disclosed having a substance abuse issue. 53% noted a disability, and 40% a prior felony conviction. I've called on the governor and spoken with Maricopa County supervisors to ask for their help in addressing the need for more resources for behavioral health and drug treatment programs. We are also asking for additional emergency funding for the Housing Trust Fund. Before the Great Recession, our state's Housing Trust Fund had over $40 million dedicated to helping low-income families find and keep housing. It has now less than half that. Our economy has rebounded. The Housing Trust Fund should not remain an afterthought in the budget. The state has also barred cities from asking developers to create a certain number of affordable units in housing developments. The city should be giving more tools to address affordable housing, not more restrictions. I support state legislation that would create a state low-income housing tax credit, House Bill 2732, and legislation to fund an emergency shelter for older adults in western Maricopa County, Senate Bill 1283. Despite all of these challenges, the city is committed to doing more. This year, we will build 455 affordable housing units with just our city housing authority. That represents a 250% increase in the number of units under construction over any year in the past decade. That is on top of resources we are investing in partnership with nonprofits and other developers through programs such as Housing for People with AIDS and our home funds. That number of affordable housing units also represents more than any housing authority in the state. I have asked our housing department to put aside 100 housing vouchers, focusing specifically on one of the most at-risk groups 
for homelessness, seniors. We are also putting forward city on property to be developed into affordable housing projects. In 2020, our city's budget prioritized eviction assistance and additional resources for neighborhoods impacted by homelessness. The best way to keep people off the streets is to keep them in their homes. Phoenix has a robust eviction assistance program and we would like to see the county and state put more resources into this area. We will also continue to invest in the things that allow for not merely a roof over someone's head, but a quality of life. That means a robust transportation system to get people to jobs and services. We will continue to grow our economy and move towards better, high quality jobs. We also know that we need to create new jobs and ensure less stigma for individuals transitioning back into civilian life from the criminal justice system. When individuals are transitioning out of behavioral health facilities, the correctional system, or out of hospitals following medical treatment, they need good options where they can have the best chance to succeed. The Human Services Campus cannot be asked to solve all of these challenges alone. I have, asked many, I have said many times that I do not believe the way to fix homelessness is congregating individuals from across a region into one neighborhood. Data has proven this model to be ineffective for both the individuals it aims to serve and the neighborhoods that must face the challenge of an influx of individuals lacking resources and shelter. In our downtown, we have the largest shelter in the state with the Human Services Campus. The great work of this campus has made it the de facto shelter provider for much of the region. Two years ago, Maricopa County shut down the neighboring overflow shelter, further constraining an already overburdened system. The campus area has a request currently moving through the zoning process for additional beds. While I believe these beds would more appropriately serve individuals if they were spread out in a smaller regional model, I also realize that on the path to change, there must be compromise. With that in mind, I've decided to tentatively support the special zoning request from the campus, but with very strenuous parameters, which will be strictly enforced. Without these strict stipulations in place, some of the strictest the city has ever set forth, I will be unable to support it. These parameters are numerous and in place to address three primary issues, health, safety, and long-term sustainability. The surrounding neighborhoods should not be alone in their fight to improve their community. They need our support. Just as it is unfair to ask one city to take on the burden of homelessness, nor should a few neighborhoods and its, their businesses and residents be asked to take on this challenge alone. We will be working closely with the surrounding neighborhoods as this goes through the zoning hearings to ensure the stakeholders agree to these parameters and that they are met and exceeded. We will also be asking for an annual review of the zoning every year for the first five years and quarterly community outreach meetings for the first three years. The campus has asked for 500 additional beds. I am not sure that is the right number for downtown Phoenix, but I'm willing to discuss it and sit down with stakeholders. What I do know is that Phoenix represents 40% of the population of Maricopa County, but we are home to 83% of the emergency shelter beds. Best practices throughout the nation show that when resources are available to at-risk individuals within the communities with which they are most familiar, the communities where they have friends and families, they are far more likely to access, access them and succeed. We are the fastest growing city in the country. People are coming here because of what this city represents, welcoming residents, plentiful jobs, and beautiful surroundings. However, we do want help from our surrounding cities, counties, and the state to help ensure we are not leaving people out of this success story, that all Arizonans have a part in our shared future. Phoenix wants to be an equal partner in this pursuit. We are putting funding, policy, and programming towards addressing this issue. We ask others to join us. Thank you for coming today. We have subject matter experts from our city staff here as well, and both they and I will now take questions. I would ask our city leaders department heads to come forward.